Thursday night football. It'll be the Jets and the Texans. With the Texans getting one and a half. Rex Ryan, ESPN NFL analyst, former head coach. You can see him with Randy Moss and Alex Smith and Teddy Bruschi, Adam Schefter, Mike Greenberg. It'll be Sunday NFL countdown every Sunday starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. Rex, good to talk to you again. Why are the Jets favored by one and a half? <laughs> well, that's a great question. Uh, I guess people haven't watched the uh, the games, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> you know, might be might be the reason. But. But, but Dan, seriously, though, the Jets should dominate this game. I mean, when you look at it on paper, Houston's really – I mean, they're really struggling to protect the quarterback right now. Uh, no Nico Collins. Now now you don't have uh, Diggs out there. So you got one receiver to throw to. Um, I mean, so the defense should dominate for the Jets. And then on the on the flip side, you have all this talent over there. I mean, when Mike Williams is not even playing for you, you know, I mean, you get Devontae Adams, you got Garrett Wilson, you got two great backs. On paper, you know, Aaron Rodgers, at quarterback, you should dominate this game. But you don't play it on paper. And that's why the, the spread is only a point and a half when it should be about, you know, eight, you know, seven or eight, it looks like. Mm-hmm. But, it, and I mean, it really should be. But, I mean... Hell, if you watch the games, you know, I see a team that is so poorly coached offensively that, like, you, you don't take advantage of your weapons uh, with, when, you know, with you, the Jets. Um, like, they should be able to run the football, but I, I watch them on tape. I'm, I'm seeing linebackers running through, unblocked. Um, like, you know, simple things, inside zone, outside zone. It doesn't look like they – like they even know how to hell a block, like who to ID. And that's what it kind of looks like to me. So, you know. Would you take uh, the job if they offered it to you today? Oh, and it, I would definitely take it. Like not as an interim guy, no chance. But as a, yeah, full-time guy, you know, next year or whatever, absolutely. Because I believe in the talent there. I know the ownership group and and I love the fan base. But of course, but at the same time, I'm not the only guy. There'd be a million guys lined up for that job. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I get- don't know how attractive it is, though, Rex, because of Aaron Rodgers. Well, I would think that would be part of the thing that would attract you, but y- you got to make sure that he's 100% committed to your team. I think that's going to be the big thing. Like, it can't just be on his terms. And I think no coach is going to go in there and say, okay, it's on Aaron Rodgers' terms. He either... He's either there with you or you let him go. You know, you let him go down the road. Um, but, you know, I think that would be whoever gets that job, that's going to be the, the first order of business, I okay. would think. Okay. Would you be, not that you wouldn't be able to, but would you stand up to Aaron Rodgers and say what you just said there to him and say, hey, you're either in or you're not, you know, like, I'm not BS in here. <laughs> Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> like, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I think so. I think I might 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 do it. But the thing is, you would love to have him behind you because you you're going to change everything. That offense is is that that's that's outdated. It's not even close to what I would would run or anybody else that goes in there uh, is going to run. So they don't they use no motion, no, you know, no shifts, no no formations, and yet they still had three delay game penalties. Uh, last week in the first quarter, they had to use three timeouts. Like, what the hell? And and they they don't do anything creative over there. So to me, no, that's got to change. Like, it, it doesn't matter. It, it has to change. And is he willing to do that? I don't know. You know, probably not. You know, and if that's the case, then so be it. So be it. If you were on the sidelines and Anthony Richardson comes over and said, I took myself out because I'm tired, coach, you would have said yeah. what? I would have said that's that's cool. Go ahead and park it on that on that bench. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry. You can be tired because right now that's it. Like I've never seen anything like that. Dad, it, we how long have you covered this game? Have you ever seen a quarterback do that ever? I've never like, heard somebody admit to it. You know, somebody can be winded, get the you know wind yeah. knocked out of them or something. But you got to lie in a situation like that. You got to say, you know, my chin strap is messed up or my communication, anything. 
But, you know, he's 22 and he told the truth. Well, the, the thing that kills me is this. Like, how the hell did he think that was acceptable? Like, you know, in his mind, like, oh, Man, I'm just tired. I'm gonna I'm gonna tap out like I've been rushing the passer. You know, I'm a <laughs> 300 pound defensive tackle and and things. But yeah, that's uh, that's Ripley's. And here's the thing: the the whole team knows that somebody has obviously forced the issue. Whether it's the GM saying you got to play this quarterback or whatever, because right now he he's got the a lower uh, completion percentage than Tim Tebow. So it's like, come on, stop already. And when he came out of college, I, I never, I, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, there's no way he can't, you know, he's a guy that had no idea how to read coverages or anything else. You know, he's just a big athletic guy, a freak, but, but I thought he had a million miles to come. And I was shocked how, how well he played as a rookie though. And I'll be at only three or four games. Yeah. I was shocked. And then it kind of fell back. This is kind of what I anticipated this year, how he's playing. But but they're way better with Joe Flacco. At least they have a chance with Joe Flacco at quarterback, in my opinion. He's Rex Ryan, NFL analyst for the Mothership, former NFL head coach. The Bears situation, we've dissected that at the end of the game with the Commanders. I just, for the life of me, don't understand why a timeout wasn't called. First of all, you gave up. 12 yards. You didn't even contest it. So now you've put him in the position to even throw the pass. Okay, you got it. Timeout. Let's regroup. Let's remind. I don't need somebody engaging with the crowd. Like, I don't, they had three timeouts, Rex. Right. You, you don't take them with you when you die. Like, what are you doing? I didn't understand yeah. that. Well, absolutely, Dan. And when you look at it, <laughs> like, you can see Eber flus because he, uh, like I, his exam, like his his explanation of the play before the hail mary was an absolute lie because you see him on the sideline. We did a thing with Dan Orlowski and and Greeny and I, and they where we showed him literally trying to get the corner down. Like he's literally like, we can't play like this. Like we we got to protect the sideline. And he had corners clearly. One of them's turned backwards. The other one's about 30 yards off. Like, what are you doing? And the thing that kills me is, like, you're exactly right. They should have called a timeout based on that. But here's the other thing they should have called a timeout for. Your best pass rusher is sitting on the sideline. Montez Sweat is sitting on the sideline. Like, isn't that another reason to call timeout? Let's get our best pass rushers uh, on the field. They had a spy. They said, well, he's covering the back. <laughs> Why the hell are you covering a running back when they need 80 yards, 70 yards? That's just, that's craziest thing I've ever heard. And they got this guy. So it's a three man rush. And by the way, they had no type of game on the three man rush. So sometimes if you present a three man rush, you're going to put the quarterback where you want him. And they let this quarterback run around either side. They had no idea how to how to uh, uh, get the ball out of his hand. They you know they get double teamed. Every one of them got double teamed. He's there for ten seconds or twelve seconds before he throws the ball down the field. Uh, I mean, it's just it, it's just ridiculous. But yeah, I mean, he should have called timeout absolutely one hundred percent just to get the best personnel on the field, yeah. let alone these guys are turned backwards. And, and, you know, John at the fans, that was another reason, but it was, it was unreal. And unfortunately, like for this guy, I think they have a good football team. I think the bears have a really good football team. Um, and obviously you got a, a, a young, you know, a young quarterback that, that's, that's going to ascend. He's not there yet, but man, I mean, he's a generational talent. So, there's a lot of positive things about this team. If you're Matt Eberflus, I don't know if you can overcome this, Dan. I don't know if you can. Like, this might be something that when they send them down the road, this is one of the reasons. Well, I wondered when the game ended, is this one of those games we look back and say, if they had won that game, they might have made the playoffs. And and look, he's a lame duck coach. Were you ever a lame duck coach in, in the last year of a contract? I sure felt it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
I thought of it, but I sure felt it a couple of times. So, yeah. I don't know uh, what that feeling, like Mike McCarthy. Right. How can you feel comfortable? How can you not think about that, Rex? No, absolutely that's on the back of your mind. But all you can do is, is like, and, and I've been there. I've given the old, hey, here's a one-year extension or whatever. Um when you know damn well what that means, like you're you're as good as gone. Um, but you just coach your your you know you just cut you coach your butt off, man. That's what you do. You focus on that, and at no point do you ever like shortchange your players or or the guys that are coaching with you in in, in that. So it really like you know it's there. You know you have to win. You know it has to be. You know, it might not be realistic expectations or whatever, but like you've got to give every damn thing you got. And that's what you owe it to. And that way, when when they do run you out of the building, at least you, you, you're you sitting there with your head held high that, you know what, I did the, the very best I could and no regrets. I know the job isn't open. We assume it will be. Is the Cowboys job a good job? Any job in the NFL is a good job. There's there's only 32 of these things. But Dallas in particular, that that's like maybe that job's not for everybody. I get what you're saying. But if if you are a guy that is competitive and wants to be in that damn arena to say, all right, look, I'm going to show you how good I am, all that type of stuff, which that's what an NFL coach should be. You ought to damn, like, I, I I mean, I would think anybody, I mean, would just love that opportunity. Come back and say, all right, I'm in it now. I'm in the fishbowl. Let's go. And it's like, you know, bring it up. Because that team, that team is, they do a great job personnel-wise. Like, they know what, the, the, they know what a player looks like, you know. And I'll be it, look, I know they didn't handle the offseason very well. I get that. You know, they probably could have, you know, the obvious one, bring in a Derrick Henry or something, that team might look a hell of a lot different. But the fact is, they got a lot of good players on that team, a lot of really good players on that team. So, yeah, I, I would think in a that they're going to get almost probably the pick of the litter on, you know, these coaches like this Ben Johnson. Like, to me, he's an absolute superstar. Any Anybody can get him. They ought to say, all right, whatever it takes, I'm getting this guy. Because I think he's... I think he's unique. I love how they, like offensively, everybody talks about, well, they're loaded with talent. No, that's not true. Last week, they played two guys that were cut this season. All right, Tim Patrick is a starting receiver. Allen Robinson is a starting receiver. Um, the superstar wideout they have was a fourth-round pick, Amon St. Brown. He wasn't supposed to be able to run. All right, David Montgomery was free agent. Anybody could have had as a running back, like, they do more. Jared Goff is thrown thrown out with the bathwater. But this dude right here, he is the funnest offense to watch. Really the funnest team, in my opinion. They are so creative and with shifts, motion. Why? They get tells from the defense. And, man, do they attack. And this guy attacks you so many ways, not only in the passing game, but they're the most creative run team in the National Football League. I think Sean McVay's outstanding, all right? I think he's outstanding. Here's what I love about Sean. He stole every run that they did against Minnesota, that Detroit did against Minnesota, and used it against them <laughs> in, in five days, all right? I've seen Green Bay steal from this team all the all – last year they played Dallas. The whole game plan was what Detroit had run. Like, this is the guy people are stealing from. Wow. This is the guy that everybody should go get. And, and I'm sure they will. You know, he's turned down, I think, jobs two years in a row. So he's going to be selective on where he goes. But to me, that is a, a dang superstar. Like, it, I, I think he's going to be the next great one. I really do. Great to talk to you, Rex. Thanks for joining us. We'll be watching on Sunday. All right. My pleasure, Dan. Thank you. That's Rex Ryan, ESPN NFL analyst. And you can uh, see him on NFL Countdown with uh, Randy Moss, Alex Smith, Teddy Bruschi, Adam Schefter, and Greeny. They start Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern. 